members of the media, uh, good morning to everyone. I thought that it would be particularly helpful for me just to uh, journey you how we, we have arrived here. So I've lamented the fact that uh, there is no honest attempt for us to engage and confront the political economy of uh, energy and also its uh, geopolitical manifestations. Uh, so we're not in the business of just providing megawatts. We're in the business of uh, uh, transforming the economy, ensuring that there's universal access, improving the dignity of uh, our people, but also making it possible for South Africa to realize her potential uh, going into the future. We also have uh, an ambition of achieving conditions of uh, uh, energy security so that we are able to protect and advance our sovereign interest. So what I've lamented is the fact that uh, you'd have conversations around uh, uh, various technologies, uh, various uh, uh, fuel sources that are meant to power uh, an economy, including uh, the South African economy. So I have been invited uh, on multiple occasions to go and attend the uh, conferences, uh, for an example, the mining summit. So they'll tell you uh, the contribution of coal towards uh, uh, energy generation. Uh, and then you have uh, the renewable energy complex, uh, also having conversations about the future of uh, that technology. The fact that uh, wind and PV is on the ascendancy and in fact is going to be an indispensable feature of uh, the energy mix going into, into the future. And of course the contribution of hydro, we have uh, uh, benefited immensely as a country, Kahora Baza. It has always been part of uh, the energy mix uh, in the country. And then there's very little conversations about uh, nuclear. And I was making the point, where are the nuclear people? Because we've got uh, a sterling record, 76 years of uh, contribution to the science and the technology, at least uh, to the extent that nuclear um, is responsible for, or for power or uh, the uses of nuclear for purposes of electrification. And I've come to realize that uh, a few things are present. The first, the first one is that uh, a typical nuclear scientist We'll have the features of Einstein. I'm a very uh, big fan of Einstein. <laughs> Old, gray haired, um, exceptionally intelligent, lacking social skills. <laughs> and all they do, they simply hide themselves, uh, put themselves in a corner there. And they are not the people who are confrontational because they place a great reliance on science. Uh, so they'll release paper after paper. But we have entered an, an, an arena and a period in this uh, evolving uh, energy complex of lobbyists, of those who appropriate to themselves the know-how of a technology and they've got the capacity and the potential to soil, undermine, and discredit a technology, not supported by science and evidence. But that typical nuclear scientist uh, will refuse to be dragged into the mud because those who are in the mud, they've got the capacity to survive in the mud. <laughs> so it is in your interest not to be drawn into the mud. But then there's a price you are going to pay. What is that price? Is that nuclear as a form of technology, a source of uh, energy generation in the country is on the back foot? So essentially we are on the retreat because we are unable to enter the public domain and have these conversations. And I had said myself and Deputy Minister Samantha Gray Mare that two things are going to undergird our leadership of uh, the energy and electricity portfolio. And I guess uh, it's uh, what President Ramaphosa has uh, openly articulated in public. So the first one is uh, we are going to be evidence-led in terms of our policy choices. The beauty about evidence and science is that it removes emotions. 
So if you want to undermine, you, if you want to dispro disprove and invalidate my argument, you've got an obligation to surface your scientific evidence. And those who are occupying this space in the main, they are not in that business. They are in the business of uh, using a broad platform of uh, uh, public encounters, public conversation to undermine a, a technology. Uh, so you, do, you have, it's not uncommon in this country that you have people who have not had an encounter with a laboratory in a science lecture hall who have appropriate to, appropriated to themselves an authority to speak on behalf of a nuclear as a science. And those who have done it with impeccable credentials have chosen to remain silent. And these are the people that you get to hear every day. These are not uh, experts. These are commentators. Those are two different things. A commentator, every time there's a mic placed uh, before him, he's got an, an, a, a view on anything and everything in the world. And because they are so spectacular in the manner in which they deliver, and because they get to be asked these questions so many times, every, most people get to be deceived and thinking that, oh, this is a scientist. This is an expert. No, that's a commentator. Uh, like I said, has no encounter with a lab. So doesn't, does not know uh, how to zero the instruments. Yeah, there's not had that, but there's got a view about how devastating is uh, this thing called nuclear. How not to pursue this because it's against the interest of the country. So I'm saying that uh, this is an important occasion because we are able to put in full display to the rest of the country what South Africa has contributed and what South Africa can, South Africa can contribute going into the future. And that's why the theme of uh, the conference really is to say we're decoding nuclear and addressing the following, understanding the science. Because we think that we have a duty as scientists assembled here, and I'm saying that uh, this is not the... Uh, the end all and be all, I think we've got a duty to sustain this momentum of this conversation outside the applications, and I'll come later on how we are going to execute. I think we have a duty to ensure that uh, at least as many people as possible or those who take interest must understand what this science is so that we are able to dispel these myths, we are able to undermine and push back against those uh, who have no clue about this uh, conversation we are having today. And quite frankly speaking, they have no interest of uh, listening to us because it's not in their interest to do that. So I think it's important that as a, a fraternity, a community of scientists, that you must defend the discipline. You must advance the discipline. And you must so, show a correlation of how the discipline can help to take people out of poverty. How the discipline and the science can help us to transform society. How the discipline can help us to grow an economy. So once we are able to show that correlation, I think we are in a, in a very good space. And I think the um, peaceful uses of nuclear, both for energy, electricity and the medicinal use, very powerful message on how people interact with this science on a daily basis unknowingly. And I think it's important that we are able to surface that science, crystallize it in very simple terms. I was saying to D. Jim Bambo that we must generate an idiot's guide on what is nuclear. Underline, we are going to generate an idiot's guide on what is nuclear. I think it's important we owe it to the science for us to do exactly that. Otherwise, the science as we know it and the discipline in the country uh, is going to be decimated. Just the other day, I was meeting with uh, patriotic South Africans who are anchoring part of the anchors of uh, 
the nuclear program in the U.S., led by Mr. Chris Opperman. I hope he doesn't mind that I mention that. Just to say, but we are ready and available want to come back home. Uh, but I also make the point that there's a critical mass of uh, scientists who have not left are here. So it's important that those who, are, who have left and those that are present were are able to articulate a coherent and compelling story of nuclear and were are able to illustrate how that nuclear can contribute to our sovereign ambitions. And that's why I say today is a great day. So that is in the domain of science. And then there's other things that are in the domain of uh, politics and policy making. And these are the ones that are principally responsible for the retreat of uh, nuclear, at least for purposes of uh, electricity generation. The fact that those who are given the responsibility of the political stewardship and policy making have soiled this technology. We have soiled it because uh, allegation of uh, malfeasance, leakage, corruption, manipulation, waste of money, and all of that. And what these non-scientists that don't have a scientific basis to push back and invalidate the argument, they are using other uh, arguments that are non-scientific related. And this explains the point as uh, Princess was, was uh, alluding earlier on. Myself and uh, Deputy Minister, we make the point that we have nothing to hide. So if there are complexities or the process of the 2,500 uh, bill program is compromised. Okay, that's live at the nuclear seminar in Tswane for us. That's the Minister of Electricity, Dr. Jose Enzo Ramakoba, speaking on future prospects of nuclear energy as well as a range of other issues as well. Let's